Hey there, my name is Shane Craddock and this is the Inner Edge podcast where I share a different take on how to lead and live a sustainable high performance life. Over the course of different episodes, I'm going to challenge the belief that tension, stress and struggle are essential to success and creativity. My experience is that there's an easier way, there's a better way and indeed there's an essential way that we need to explore for the times that we live in. So let's go ahead, let's jump in and explore. Hi there, welcome to uh, today's episode. Um, intention deficit disorder is what I'm going to call it. Um, and I suppose the, the the more common phrase would be ADD, attention deficit disorder. And of course, there's another one then, attention deficit hyperactive disorder, ADHD, where I suppose people are just not able to sit still, etc. And obviously both of those uh, disorders, I don't know, it's a separate conversation around um, the, the the medical industry, but they're, they're great at naming things and creating kind of spin-off industries. Um, not to say that they're not genuine problems, but I think it's a wider discussion. But anyway, I suppose I'm trying to be a little bit creative here, perhaps to kind of uh, get your attention by calling this intention deficit or disorder, which in my experience actually is something that is definitely probably very relevant to um, definitely more relevant to leaders or if you're interested in actually having and creating a better career a better personal life a better business so <clears throat> most people excuse me most people have intention deficit dis- dis- <laughs> i can't even say it intention deficit disorder maybe i just call it idd yeah we call it idd so what is intention first of all right well under my definition um your 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 intention is directed attention towards something so attention is kind of the key variable there and some intentions or things that you want uh, are conscious and some are unconscious and believe it or not at the unconscious level there might be certain intentions that you're actually telling yourself you want to create it could be out of fear something you don't want to happen or something unconscious from the past and not realizing that it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy but i suppose in this context i'm going to talk about um maybe more so to do with something that you think you want something that you think would make a difference to your business your career your life and on a very simple level um if i think about kids and my kids in particular they are like gold the gold standard in terms of focusing on getting what they want so if if my son sam's and he has done this to me before said daddy yeah want to get an ice cream no no sam that's that's not going to happen like he just doesn't hear the obstacle. He doesn't hear the objection. You know, sales training doesn't even come into it. It's just, well, he's not going to give up. Or my daughter Jane says, well, look, you know, can we go to the cinema this weekend? Da, 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 da. Like if you if you have kids, you know that all kids, which at one point we were, obviously, hopefully, uh, they're so clear on the intention that they just do not hear the objections. They don't hear the obstacles. And that is somebody who doesn't have intention deficit disorder. That's somebody who has has got what I would call lock-on intention, which is kind of where I think we need to go more with. And it's certainly something that with all the different clients, my own my own experience over 25 years, working with all sorts of different types of leaders and people and ambitious achievers in sports and business, uh, the ones who excel are the ones who have either figured this out themselves unconsciously or from working with somebody like me, they will lock on to an intention, right? So a, a, a key question you got to ask yourself is do you really want to do it like do you really want to get this thing you're after like if i'm talking to sam about the ice cream that that's a silly question because it's just well i'm just i'm going to keep at this guy and wear him down until i get it and uh <laughs> especially when they're younger that 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 is that is what they would do um, and we guilt trips and everything else all sort of strategies and i wouldn't have any training but they somehow figure to get the right words and basically persist until they achieve their intention and uh, just to kind of give you a kind of a maybe a negative story about myself, just in case you think that I'm free from any sort of uh, challenges or flaws, etc. Um, if you if you if you know me, you probably know that I've written a couple of plays. Um, and the first play I think I wrote, which is called Into Minds, the comedy one act play, about forty five minutes long. I think I wrote that back in the early two thousands, and then I had an idea maybe a year later for. Uh, a couple of years later for uh, a full-length play, which became The, the Waiting Room, which all 
sounds and looks great when it's done because we eventually wrote it and then I formed a production company and we we, we brought it to life in 2014. Uh, we toured around different parts of Ireland uh, and you know, we sold out in different places, including Dublin. It was an amazing experience. So glad I did it. But it, it, it took seven years for me to actually finish that play. And so my intention wasn't locked on and it was kind of gone into the area of what I would call wishful thinking. Um, and so I think also I had, without realizing it in that area, intention deficit disorder. I was just allowing myself to get distracted with what I what I was telling myself for other things that were just getting in the way. And eventually the story I was telling myself on reflection was, uh, oh, look, when I get time, then I'll do that, which a lot of people will do for things that are supposedly important to them. And it wasn't until I was speaking with a mentor of mine and it came up in discussion. I can't remember how, but she very quickly said, well, do you really want to do it? And I said, yeah, of course I do. And she goes, okay, when are you going to do it? I said, oh, no, I'm really busy. And actually, it was a really busy time of my life at the time. I mean, the kids were very small. Um, we had two kids under, I think it was three. Um, and there was a lot of travel and business was, uh, my business was growing and things like that. And there was a lot of work happening. And I said, oh, no, it's not, it's not as simple as that. She said, well, it, it kind of is if it's that important to you. And I said, well, it is important. She said, okay, well, when are you going to have it done? And uh, <laughs> I said, well, uh, okay, six months time. And now, what happened there was she forced me to say, do you really want to do it? And then she also, because I respect this person uh, hugely, uh, she put it up to me. She said, okay, look, you, uh, you give me an update every week. Tell me what you did, what you're going to do next week. And that really now put it up to me. But I found amazingly that because I just, in a way, said, okay, well, I'm going to get stuck in here. I don't want to disappoint her. I don't want to disappoint myself. And I do want to get it done. So away we go. And that's the value, I guess, of having somebody to hold you accountable. But... I got most of it done within six months, but it, it, it didn't get done for another three months, but it was done. And then from there, the journey really started. But also then it went into another challenge, which was how do you get it produced? And I started shipping it around to different places, got rejected all over the place. I had several um, uh, people at the top of the theater industry in, in Ireland tell me that it wouldn't work. Um, and then I kind of stopped one day and I thought, well, hang on now, if I have my business head on here and not my creative head, what would I do? And I said, well, I, I'd just make my own production company and I hire people and I just go after and do it. And that's what I did. But it kind of drifted still until I went, hang on a second here. This isn't going to, this isn't working either. Um, I need to book a theater, which we did in the civic theater in Tala in Dublin. Uh, I set the dates and once the dates were set and I paid the money for the theater, that was it. I was locked on. I was committed. I was committed. So whatever you can do to kind of trick yourself into saying, well, look, I'm committed as anybody who's listening to this, probably will know if you reflect back on when you got really good stuff done. There was something there that kind of either you were forced to out of necessity or somebody held you accountable. Um, in business context, it's, I mean, I think it's very relevant to things like sales. And in my experience, I would say it's maybe 10% of salespeople would really have committed intention, as in like, I'm just going to knock it out of the park. And that one in 10 person is a person who's generally always going to be the top salesperson or the top two, because most other people will, will allow their intention to get distracted, okay, um, by things like obstacles, uh, you know, administration, the news about the market, oh, no, it's not a good market, not a good time, um, or their feelings or their mood. They, will, they, will, they won't take action when their mood drops, whereas the best salespeople, they just don't care about their feelings. They just take action regardless, and, and that's the true sign. And... Um, of somebody who's locked on with their intention, you know, how they feel doesn't even come into it. I always remember now as I'm talking about the uh, movie uh, writer and director, Quentin Tarantino, and he, he was being interviewed with, I think there was five other directors at the, this kind of interview table. It's on YouTube as far as I know, and it was for the Oscars. I, I might've been for, for the hateful eight. I think he was nominated for that, but uh, he, they were going around the table saying, well, look, you know, in terms of trying to make it in the movie industry, what was your plan B? And I think there was two directors answered before him very eloquently. And they said, well, I'd probably go back and do this in my job. And when it came to Quentin Tarantino, he just went, look, there was no plan B. And the interviewer said, oh, yeah, look, fair enough. But not look, uh, you know, what, what would you have fallen back on if it hadn't worked? And Quentin Tarantino said, no, you don't understand. There was no plan B. I was going to do whatever it took, literally whatever it took to make it in the movie business. There wasn't any plan B. I made that decision. 
And again, there's somebody who just, it's lock on intention. Somebody like that, they just will not have intention deficit disorder. You know, they're going to have hyper focus probably on their intention. Um, if you bring it into kind of leadership kind of context, this example for, for example, is uh, all too real. Very often, even the best of the best CEOs or leaders or entrepreneurs, you know, I've had so many conversations over the years, <clears throat> excuse me, and see if this is true for you. I say, look, you've got 10 things here that you've told me are really important. Uh, can you prioritize them for me? No, Shane, I can't do that. Sorry, because they're all the same priority. They're all really important. And so straight away, what we have is that is a perfect symptom of intention deficit disorder because that, that can never be true. And if that is the case, the business is just not going to excel. And that person is going to have all sorts of unforeseen problems. And it's like, you know, do you want to move 25 th five things forwards an inch or do you want to move two or three things forwards a mile is something that I heard from a mentor of mine. And it's hard to do it because, you know, when you're running a business or running a busy team, there's always loads and loads of things to do, 100 things, a 1,000 things. But again, the one who excels is the one who kind of locks on to what is the end result that I am committed to. So I suppose in my mind, I, I think of kind of three levels of intention. The first one, and see if any of these resonate for you, is, okay, the first one is what I would call uh, like to have, like to have. Um, the second one is I, I'm interested, you know, and I would say, um, you know, that you, you'll see that you, you'll make, it's kind of half committed. So if I stay with the first two, like like to have is more in the zone of wishful thinking. I say, like, oh, I would like, I'd like to have a better job. I'd like to have more income. I'd like to kind of get more sales. But it's the commitment level is quite low, really, in terms of going through the pain barrier. The second level then being, oh, no, I'm interested where maybe I want to lose weight or I want to gain weight or, you know, uh, I, I definitely want to get a certain result. I'm kind of half committed, but it's not like my son with the ice cream. You know, you're, you, you'll be swayed away by the first obstacle or the first big obstacle. And then the third one is uh, your lockdown commitment. So it's lockdown commitment. You're fully committed. You don't see the obstacles. You're, you're going to get the ice cream no matter what. Um, and your intention is very clear very clear there's a compelling reason for you to kind of want to go after it uh, there's a lot of meaning attached to it for you for some reason it's probably attached to other personal goals be they meaning or financial or personal or relationships so you have to ask yourself and be honest and this sometimes is hard for everybody is to say well like you know you, you can't have that probably level of lock-on commitment for everything so what are the most important things for you like what do you really want so again, going into the question side of it, like what are your intentions? As the father said to the man, <laughs> what are your intentions? You're dating my daughter now, what are your intentions? Oh, and that's gonna put it up to me. But what are your intentions? And if you're serious about it, maybe take a pen or a pencil and, and write them out, write out the top five intentions for you for this year or for the next three years, what are they for you? And then do the hard work and narrow it down to the top one or two. Like what do you really, really want what are you willing to get stuck into you know what is non-negotiable for you um, and of course when i'm talking about commitment there is one quote that comes to mind and obviously i i collect quotes i write a weekly email about quotes and i've written a book called inspire me which has got lots of my favorite quotes in it with ideas for actions and everything else but i'm sure you know this quote but i'm gonna read it out anyway because ah, it's nice to kind of go back and revisit these powerful words so it's the one by uh, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. So it's, it's, I think the title on it is Until One is Committed. So until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always ineffectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans. The moment that one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issue from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance which no one could have dreamt would come your way. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness is genius, power and magic in it. Yeah. Beautiful words. But again, coming back to the start, intention deficit disorder. I hope that this has given you some food for thought because this is this is a kind of a never-ending game. I find the same myself that some areas my intention is very clear and other areas maybe not so clear. Um, and I sometimes have to look and say, well, hang on now, 
do I really want to do this? You know, am I wasting time? Am I fully committed? And I think if we get clearer and clearer at refining our intention and the clarity of it, it makes such a difference to everything else. And that's why I'd often say clarity is real power. That's one of the angles on it. So clarity of intention does matter hugely, but so too does the commitment level of your intention. So if you have intention deficit disorder, which I think most people will have a touch of it, let's be honest, uh, be reassured it is possible to reduce it and it's very possible to get rid of it. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.